Scotland is a stunning country, made up of dramatic scenery and a rich culture. But all has not been well with the land. After centuries of deforestation, Scotland was left with only 5% forest cover by the 1900s. Industrialization and the highland clearances broke many links between communities and the land. Even today, huge swathes of Scotland are managed in ways that damage the land and provide few jobs. I'd say the main problems are polarized land use, you know, so agriculture and forestry don't really talk to each other very much. Nature conservation, kind of in the middle, it's quite old fashioned. So it's time for kind of like change and time for sort of like looking at things in a new way. There are many positive developments taking place. Reforestation, land restoration, new community woodlands and new forest enterprises. How can these good news stories be tied together and made into the norm rather than being isolated exceptions? In 2018, Reforesting Scotland's Land Revival Study Tour brought together a broad group of people working in all aspects of land management to go and see some of the places where restoration is taking place. The lessons learned and the relationships built on this tour will help to create a more cohesive approach to land use in the future. The group was driven, bounced and splashed round Scotland. They were scorched by one of the hottest summers on record and soaked in autumnal downpours. The tour started with two days in the Cairngorms, then another two days in the Moffat area of the Borders, rounding off in Scotland's central belt on the final two days. The group visited experts who spoke of the challenges facing land use, as well as inspirational stories from people taking new approaches, promoting healthy communities in a well-forested land. At Glenfeshi in the Cairngorms, the group saw how forests can return once the pressure from deer previously kept high for sporting reasons is reduced. Glenfeshi we try and manage the environment to the best of our ability. We've been doing that by reducing the herbivore impacts um, to allow for the Caledonian pine forest to naturally regenerate. As you've seen today, the, the amount of natural regeneration is, is, is quite stunning. And So the reality of what we are doing here has been no fencing has saved the Scottish people a lot of money in taxes and subsidies and we've been employing people with real real jobs they live here they work here they're full time so we have now we've probably doubled the amount of employees on on these states at Limbrek they saw trees being integrated into the management of a 100 acre croft the reason why we we bought the croft was because we um we were living and working in, in the south of England and uh, we had kind of very sort of busy jobs and I guess we had this sort of internal kind of instinct, this kind of need to live a life that was, was kind of closer to the land. I think what we're really trying to do as, as part of our, our offer at Limbrek is bring people to the Croft. It's, it's as much about showing what we do to other people as us gaining inspiration from people who come here as yeah. well. I think that education is, is critical to addressing this lack of interaction that people have nowadays with the natural environment. So it's not just about getting more trees in the ground, it's about celebrating trees, it's about celebrating woodland. And that's not just uh, for wildlife, it's for people too. On the visit to Scotland's central belt at Cumbernauld, the group were shown how forested sections within an urban area can connect with people and the local communities. A typical Wild Ways Bell session is we always go for a walk, um, we meet in the town centre and we walk from there to a green space. So we're teaching people how to get from a place that they know to a place that they maybe don't know, to a green natural space. When we get there, we'll always have a social element. We'll boil up some water, we'll make some hot chocolate, we'll make some tea, coffee. And we'll have just a social session where we sit, we'll have a chat, we get to know each other, we make connections, we make friends. And it's just a, a space for people to enjoy being in nature. Just spending time in the outdoors is massively beneficial for people's mental health. And at Inzavar Woods, a pioneering sawmill now employs eight people. We started about 20 years ago. All the wood is grown in Scotland. It, it provides good, kind of resilient, high quality jobs. Uh, we have, we started by uh, working often with people who've been long-term unemployed, even people who've been on community service orders and then remained here as employees. It's worked well in the sense that people have stayed here. You know, our average term of people remaining here has been about eight or nine years. 
Over the whole of the tour, the group saw many aspects of regeneration working together, with community woodlands connecting people to the woods, innovative forest-based businesses creating jobs and income, and the ecological restoration of glens, rivers, and land damaged by industry, sheep, and deer. The tour has generated a huge amount of debate between the participants. It's just really great to get a different perspective. I think my perspective is West Coast centric and I'm not, I, I don't plant trees. I just manage deer and recreation and I let the trees do their thing and hopefully they regenerate. So it's nice to actually come across sites where we're seeing success with planting. It's having the chance to see the range of options people are exploring with regards to integrating woodland forestry into, the, into their jobs and their lifestyles. We were just up there discussing um, native woodland as they've done at Carifran and discussing also conifer plantations and the economics of it and I think it would be nice to see far more variety. Reforestation is such an important thing whether people realize it or not it's so important just for the direct and also indirect benefits that people get from forest you know, in, you know directly people benefit in a, in a myriad of ways whether it's through economic purposes or just you know going to walk their dog and then indirectly people that are going to these areas are also benefiting in these ways as well. So my hope for the future of forests in Scotland is really just more of them, more native woodland. And I think for that to happen, people need to understand that they're important. So I think we really need to see people uh, engaging with woodland and, and seeing the value in them. Love to see more and more of these native woodland restoration projects happening all around the country. The people who are on this tour will be applying uh, the thoughts that they've had during the tour and making connections um, you know, for the rest of their careers. And not just that, but they're part of organisations and they'll be influencing those organisations that they work for. And so I hope they'll be bringing into focus for more people the Reforesting Scotland vision, which is healthy communities in a well-forested land. And if we can achieve that, then I think the tour will have been worthwhile. <laughs>